Hi, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. Um, we're back. Don and I have really thought about something that we're seeing a lot more reemergence of, and that is the controversy surrounding leucine. And as many of you know who have watched our videos and have followed me, leucine is one of the essential amino acids. It's a branch chain amino acid, arguably the most controversial. Uh, we won't get into detail about why that is on this video, but it is oftentimes controversial as it relates to the mTOR and cancer story. But one of the things that we wanted to talk to you a little bit about is, is it necessary to supplement? And are branch chain amino acids helpful in their supplementation? So Don, I'm going to let you kick it off and I will chime in as we go along. Yeah, there's... I mean, leucine is one of the nine essential, um, and there's a, been some interesting discoveries over the last few years. And the two things to think about with leucine are, one is there's the minimum requirement for amino acids, which is really based on nitrogen balance. And that's where the original leucine data came from way back in the early 70s, you know, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, with 25-year-old guys, and it was nitrogen balance. And now there's some data more about optimum requirements uh, using what we call the indicator amino acid uh, oxidation, which is more of a metabolic outcome. And the, the early data suggested we only needed about 2.7 grams of leucine, which is really easy to meet in almost any proteins. But now the data suggests we need more like six grams per day, which is a lot more and your diet ends up being a little more careful. And the difference is these young, the original data was with young adults and the later data is now with older adults. You know, and I just 45. want to chime in and I want to chime in something because uh -huh. you bring up a really good point about the leucine recommendation of two to three grams per day, the older recommendations. That is also in line with the quote RDA of 0.8 grams per kilogram, which is also based on nitrogen balance studies, which there is incredibly flawed. So right. just want to so, point that out because we know that that's suboptimal as is. And so, you know, I'll come back to the protein quality aspect of it again, but so that's one part. The other part is that as we get older, our regulation of muscle protein turnover, which you and I have talked about before, becomes more sensitive to the protein and particularly leucine. So when we're young, and growing muscle protein synthesis really is controlled by hormones and you can get along with much lower levels of protein but as we get older the quality and the amount of protein to protect your muscles becomes higher so we've got two things there going on at the same time as we get older we need a higher level of leucine to protect muscles and we also just need a higher level because of the efficiency of metabolism and what that ends up meaning is that the protein quality of the diet has to get better as we get older. Leucine is pretty prevalent in most proteins, and so it's reasonably easy to get to that early 2.7 gram amount, but when you're trying to get to six grams or more, now you have to be much more careful. Um, in general, leucine ends up relating, you know, is around 8% of protein. Uh, animal proteins, it's usually 9 or 10%. Plant proteins, it's down around 6 to 7%. And so, you know, the more plant-based you are in the older diet, you're going to have to have a lot more protein. So give and me an so example of, so a calorie recommendation or kind of a meal, uh, a meal recommendation would be, so for every 30 grams or so of high quality animal based protein, you'll get about roughly two and a half grams of leucine. Right. And what you're saying is that, just to clarify for the watchers, so it's user friendly in the concept of a meal threshold would be roughly doubling the amount of plant based proteins or maybe 35 to 45 percent. Yeah, it wouldn't be doubling, right. but it's but it's definitely going to increase it. So, you know, with with animal-based proteins, dairy is one of the highest. You can get along, you can get that leucine requirement with 23, 4, 5 grams of protein and with meats around 30 grams. But with, say, soy, you need around 33, 35. With, 
wheat or quinoa, you need almost 40. Um, and so, you know, you can do it, uh, but you really have to decide how you're going to do it. And with plant-based proteins, you have to realize the quality is going to be lower. So that means you're going to have to have more of it. And if you are like me, you'd rather have natural foods versus highly processed foods. That means you're going to try and eat beans or nuts. Now you have very low bioavailability and a lot of carbohydrates or fats that go with it. Mm -hmm. So the issue is how are you going to balance all of those things? And, and the bottom line is as you get older, that balancing act becomes more and more difficult. Mm. And one of the reasons it becomes dis difficult is you trade protein quality and have to increase the quantity. So now if you're moving towards a plant-based diet, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, you are now increasing caloric intake, lowering um, the bioavailability of many nutrients such as zinc, selenium, iron, uh, many yeah. of the B vitamins. And um, it, it just becomes harder to also then reach that amino acid yeah. quantity uh, specifically as you age, because there's a very specific meal threshold. And I think understanding that there is a leucine threshold uh, to then trigger and stimulate muscle is really important. And so if we circle back to your original question about supplementation, that suggests that if you're going to have a plant-based diet or a low protein diet in general, then you may want to supplement these branch chain amino acids to be sure you get to those leucine thresholds. Mm -hmm. If your target's going to be two and a half to three grams at a meal, uh, you may need to supplement, you know, to get to that kind of level to protect your muscles. So, you know, I, I think supplementation has a place but you know the athletes often say, well, if as little is good, then a lot more must be better, and that's not true. You know, once you reach that threshold of leucine, say three grams, taking in six grams, taking in twice as much doesn't help. You know, then it just becomes extra calories. So what you want to do is be sure you're sensitive to the amount you needed a meal, two and a half to three grams, but you don't need a lot of extra either. Got it. So I think that that's when you think about how do you match the leucine requirement, I'm just curious, what do you think the optimal uh, leucine content is for a, like on a daily? Do you think it's eight to nine grams that that would be that's optimized? what you say. That's usually where I go. I, I think first and foremost, uh, I always pay attention to the first meal and the last meal. And I always target at least three grams of leucine at each of those. So that kind of gets you to six. Uh, and then, you know, what do you do at lunch? Um, the data is not nearly as clear as to how important lunch is, but most of us usually say, well, you're looking at three meals per day. Each of those are trying to get to two and a half to three. So that gets you to that nine or, you know, eight and a half to nine grams per day. So I think that's a very safe target. Um, one of the things we know that interacts with that is exercise. The more resistance exercise you do, the more efficient muscle protein turnover becomes. So the more sedentary you are, the more important those three leucine meals become, frankly, uh, which is maybe counterintuitive the way most people think. Most people think, well, the more exercise I do, the more protein I must need, but it actually the more sedentary you become as you get older, the more protein you need. So that brings us back to one of the original questions um, that we kind of touched on is, does an individual need to supplement leucine? Um, I do think it's important to discuss because there's a lot of kind of controversy around, should one supplement with branched chain amino acids? Should one supplement with leucine alone? I actually get this question quite often. And I can tell you, um, the answer to that is, would you supplement alone? No, and Don is gonna explain some of the science behind it. Um, is there some benefit to branched chain amino acids? I absolutely believe that there is. And I think that yeah. um, there's a few ways in which, and you know, without sh throwing Don under the bus, he uses them and they really help with soreness and uh, he's incredibly active and he uses them for uh, recovery, some aspects of recovery. Yeah. Um, would you say that's true? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I think that, Again, I think that the first meal 
of the day really needs to be protein rich. So I tend to have a protein meal at breakfast that has about 45 grams of protein in it. So there's no need at all to supplement leucine at that meal. I mean, you've got more than enough. I probably have close to four grams of leucine because it's my meal is very dairy rich. However, at lunch, I usually am trying to control calories. I don't want to have a big lunch. Right. So my lunch frequently may only have, it may be a salad with only 15 grams of protein. And so I'll add a branched chain amino acid supplement into that. And you're, you raised the point about leucine alone. The thing is with leucine, Leucine stimulates the metabolism of the other two branch chain amino acids, valine and isoleucine. So you should never supplement leucine alone. You should always supplement all three of them in approximately a two to one to one ratio. So I, I like it then. I also use leucine frequently in my recovery drink after exercise. Uh, I like to use a hydration drink after exercise. I, I do HIIT type of exercise, so fairly high intensity type of exercise. Uh, so water replacement's important to me, and I'll frequently add leucine, uh, branch chain amino acid supplement to that. Um, I think it helps with soreness. The research is kind of mixed on that, but I personally like it for that. But you know, if you're really looking for a lot of hard science there, um, it's pretty sketchy. I um I use it a lot with my patients. I do think that branched chain amino acids are incredibly valuable. Um, you know, it's interesting. Early on in my fitness career, I often used them in a smaller meal. So, for example, um, back in my competition days, I would do maybe three ounces of fish, which is really sub threshold, and then I would add in some of branched chain amino acids. So it would allow me to keep my caloric content low while still getting uh, an optimal stimulation of my tissue. The other people I always use it for is I always use it for uh, aging. And listen, arguably we're all aging, but anybody who is aging also recovery, um, recovery from an injury, if they're not feeling well, um, I think they're all uh, very valuable components. Um, Without being too ambiguous, I just recommend one scoop. It's roughly, what is it? It's, you know, it is a to total of five grams of branched chain amino acids. Easy. I mean, and that, you know, that's only 20 calories. So it's a pretty insignificant type of supplement. You know, it doesn't really do much I, in terms of calories. I, the original research on supplementation was for small meals. And so we did it in animals and, and Teresa Davis did it in animals. And, and now Doug Patton Jones and Stu Phillips have both done it in humans where, you know, to your point, you know, people who are consuming small meals because they're bed fast or sick or recovering or for whatever, you know, their, their weight loss, they're trying to keep calories down. Uh, you can take a 15 gram protein meal, add in a branch chain amino acid supplement, and it will respond almost like it's a 35 or 40 gram meal. And so there's a huge advantage to try and correct a very small protein meal. Yeah, I, um, I think that that is super valuable. I would love to, hopefully people are still really engaged in this. I know that this is a little technical, but I think if we sum it all up, it's this concept that the original recommendations for leucine, which is one of the branched chain amino acids, an essential amino acid, is too low. So the current recommendation is two to three grams. That's based on um, nitrogen balance studies, which are archaic and also really utilized in younger men. So a lot of the studies have been done in, in young men, whether 18 years or or so, and that's not nearly enough to optimize an individual. And now, when I, and I, I would just interrupt and say, you know, if, if you're, if the question you're asking is, how do you prevent a deficiency in a 25 year old? Yes. I think it still is true. Yes. But I don't think not that's what for that. most people are after, you know, just yes. preventing, you know, it's like saying, you know, how much vitamin C do I need? Do I need just enough to prevent scurvy or do I want to have a healthy immune system? Right. I think that's all a great point. And what we're saying is that the numbers for optimization are much closer to eight to nine grams of leucine in a day. And when we think about how do you optimize it, 
you know, you really want to shoot for a 2.5 gram of leucine and you don't really need to think about what that is in terms of numbers as it relates to an amino acid, but how you do, how you can think about it is how it relates to the amount of protein per meal. So that is roughly, um, for us, so it's roughly 30 grams of a minimum amount of protein per meal. So what is that? Uh, four, roughly four ounces. It's 28 grams of protein depending. So four to five ounces would be kind of a minimum meal. But what you can do is have a very robust meal in the morning or your first meal, right. smaller meal later on, um, and then a, another larger meal that's hitting roughly 40 to 50 grams of protein. And, and I want to say one thing, and we're going to talk about this in, in a few other videos that I have always taught even distribution. And the reason is even distribution of protein can be very, very beneficial if you are learning. You want to learn the amounts to reduce hunger, to optimize muscle, to really help with body composition. So I think a great phase one um, strategy is an even distribution over three meals, but you once you get really good at that, then you can actually adjust uh, depending on your hunger levels and, and your capacity. So do you want to add anything else? Otherwise, I say we round out this video and then um, got more up our sleeve. Yeah, no, I think it's been a, I think it was a good discussion and I think it's highlighted some of that controversy that I see on my Twitter feed all the time and I think continues out there. Yeah, and if you guys are looking for a great branch chain amino acid product, I recommend First Form. You guys know I work with them and I educate for them. I'll put a link below um, and I'm also going to include two papers that Don and I were sharing, kind of passing back and forth as we were thinking about what we're going to talk about. So I'll include those two links and then I'll include a link to First Form. They have a great branch chain amino acid supplement. Um, if you like this video, please share it, comment, like it. Um, we spend our time doing this just because we really want to help educate. So till next time.